Hi again, everybody. I'm still Michael Feinstein, and welcome back to In the Archives, which is our ongoing series of display and uh, marginalia of uh, material that comes from the collection of the Great American Songbook Foundation. And it is my great pleasure to be here again with Emily Raposa, who is in charge of all this material and shepherding it to its proper acid-free home. Uh, acid-free is one of the most important terms of uh, library terminology, would you mm -hmm. say? Absolutely. So when we get items, a lot of people just keep them in their homes. Um, putting them into acid-free folders, plastic boxes, keeps it so the paper doesn't break down any further um, or is subject to any type of damage externally. That's why there are certain things that I keep out of acid-free containers, because I do not want them to survive. Exactly. That is the perfect way to do it, then. Yes, yes. Avoid acid-free. <laughs> right. Want something to not last. Sure. So yeah. today, I've pulled some things from our Liza Minnelli collection. And who, I know... Who? Yeah, you might have heard of her, maybe, um, possibly a good friend of yours. Yeah, well, she's an EGOT, and... I'm a no-god. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, yes, uh, Liza generously donated mm -hmm. materials, and you pulled some things. So. I did. So Liza's collection is interesting because it is full of so many photos, which are fantastic to have and preserve, um, but also that it really runs throughout her whole life. Um, so we have everything from truly baby photos um, with her and her parents all the way up through her performances um, as an adult uh, and beyond. Um, so I've just pulled a little smattering of some of those items here uh, to show off today. Great, great. I'm seeing uh, many familiar things. <laughs> uh, this came from my collection, though, right? Yes. This, this is an invitation mm -hmm. that Liza sent out when she was helping me early in my career. She threw a party for me that put me on the map. She had all of her publicity people do advanced publicity, and there was a big segment on Entertainment Tonight, and she generously introduced me to the world of entertainment for her, through her largesse. And this is the invitation from which I have no memory, uh, which is not surprising. <laughs> uh, it says, please join me. It's from Liza. I'm having a party to celebrate Michael Feinstein's opening of the new Café Mondrian, Friday, February 22nd. That was 1985. I know. Who could believe that? Uh, cocktail show, buffet, Mondrian Hotel, dress fun and fancy. And it has a logo that is the artwork of a man named Joe Eula. Mm -hmm. Joe Eula was her personal uh, artist mm -hmm. uh, as far as um, her trademark uh, look. Liza yes. has always been very canny in how she, uh, I don't want to say markets herself because she doesn't need to do that, but she always wanted to have a uniform look of her logos mm -hmm. and, and uh on her albums and on sure. any sort of material. So all, all of these things mm -hmm. are all different pieces of art sure. drawn and created by Joe Eula. Mm -hmm. This is some of Liza's merch from uh, the 1980s. This is probably from 19, the 1985 tour. And Joe Eula did the original art for Liza with a Z. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that point on, he did all of these logos through the years. This is a, a later a concert that Liza did, Manelli on Manelli, which she did on Broadway. And again, that is Joe Eula's uh, writing. And this is a souvenir book that uh, was created for that particular concert. And it, it's wonderful because uh, there's so much material in here that people would otherwise never be able to, to see. Mm -hmm. And for almost every tour that she did, Liza created souvenir books. I was in Italy with her doing a tour in 1987. And um, the Italian promoter bootlegged her souvenir book in, in print, reprinted it in Italian. And when she found out, she was beyond furious. Sure. And when she confronted him, he <laughs> says, I do not know how this could happen. This is impossible. How could this happen? <laughs> Suddenly, he had no knowledge of sure. how that happened. But it reminded me that uh, her promoter bootlegged her souvenir book. So there we are. Well, and those souvenir books have proven invaluable because some of the pictures that are printed in the souvenir books, we have the original Polaroids. Mm. And so being able to match them up and say, oh, there's a caption on this, now I immediately know exactly who's in the photo. So that's been very helpful on the archivist side of things in organizing all of her photos. Well, that's fantastic. This is a photo uh, with Liza taken of us in uh, 1987. It's, it was taken in Cleveland, Ohio. I remember that. Uh, yeah. 
August 26, 1987. <laughs> and she signed it to me, to my first, my last, my only, yours, Liza. So that's, that's nice. But she has the same photo in her, in her house, so, so she likes it too. And uh, this is some of the earlier stuff mm -hmm. uh, that comes from Liza's collection, which is so much fun because uh, people often ask Liza, how does it feel to be famous? Do you get sure. bothered by it? And she always says the same thing. I was born and they took a picture. So that's all she's ever known. That's, <laughs> that's her normal. Mm -hmm. And so people pointing to her or looking at her or taking pictures or all that is the way she's, she's always lived her life. And uh, some of these photos are very, very early. This is wonderful. And by the way, I'll show you something in case you, mm -hmm. you don't know it. This is an MGM publicity photo. Mm -hmm. This was taken by an MGM photographer. And all of these photos that are taken from movies almost always have a number in the lower left-hand sure. corner. And that number, here it says 1400X22. 1400 re refers to the production number of the film. And oh. production 1400 was the pirate. pirate. Sure. So uh, the stills and anything else related to this film in memos at MGM mm -hmm. on studio playback discs all would say 1400. So sometimes if, if uh, one cannot identify, if you don't recognize what it's from, sure. if there's a production number, you can look, you can look up the up. production number. Oh, the my gosh. Code. So that's how one could identify this as being from the pirate, even though you can also identify it because <laughs> this dress mm -hmm. Judy wore in the pirate. And incidentally, this photograph is not black and white. No. Do you know? It's sepia. Sepia, which is also the color of the first part of... The Wizard of Oz. You... I'm trying. Go to the head of the class. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is sepia. And why they printed it in sepia... We'll never know. And this is from the same film mm -hmm. because Liza is wearing the same dress. She would have been two and a half because it was 1948. And this is black and white. That's sepia. But it's from the same, possibly the same day. This is from another day at MGM. Oh, and it's uh, identified on the back. It is. Uh, this is from Words and Music, so it's also 1948. And that has the production number of Words it and Music, on 1427 the back. on the back but not on the front, which is unusual. Interesting. So there we are. And this is from Liza at the Sands, Sands. Hotel uh, in her punk period. Yes. <laughs> and you, you uh, I don't remember seeing this badge, but you said you have a whole bunch. I have of a whole bunch. 1985. So. Again, they're all Joe Eula. Yes. And this is something that I... This was from your collection. Yeah. So when I started going through Liza's and noticed the artwork and noticed the uh, different... Um, concerts and performances realized you had some tickets in your collection um, for Liza's performance in Dallas um, in November of 1985. So we have some of those. Yes, as and well. the backstage pass. Yep. Got, of course. That got me through the <laughs> the riffraff. <laughs> and on the back is uh, something that doesn't matter. No. Nope. Uh, it's it's the <laughs> last half of an envelope that uh, held photographs. Uh, I don't know why that's there. Anyway. <laughs> To uh, be able to preserve a, a, a part of Liza's legacy is very important to us because she and her family are essential to mm -hmm. the history of American popular music. And collectively, they have uh, been responsible for the creation and dissemination of so much important art that we are humbled and grateful that uh, Liza has given us the gift of helping to preserve it all. Anything else that you would like to say about this or about this this is fantastic so besides liza we have hundreds of other collections um, music and it's just an absolute joy to get to play in it every day and help organize it and give it some some safe keeping in all of our acid free uh boxes and folders you said that just the way you rehearsed i did <laughs> i'm getting better <laughs> it is a great pleasure to be with all of you thank you emily raposa and um, thank you we'll see you again very soon if I have anything to do with it.